I saw the fire start. I was out barbecuing and, uh, and saw it. And uh, when you see a forest fire and you're used to it, it's like, it's a free air show. I saw the water bombers peel off the fire out back and come to the fire out front because it was a bigger threat to the neighborhoods. And, you know, I thought they'd like it pretty good and they got it done. And uh, so then you just kind of move on with your life. And then the next couple of days, it was normal until that moment that Darby Allen said, it's not normal. I get a call from the daycare and they say, pick up your daughter, one hour warning. Um, I'm in Calgary, I can't get there, obviously. Um, I call my wife, I can't get a hold of her, so I'm a little bit concerned. Um, I call my friend, uh, who's got permission to pick up my daughter, and she said she couldn't even get out of her block. It was bumper to bumper traffic, there were fender benders everywhere. It was about two and a half or three hours later when I got a call from my wife saying she had picked up our daughter um, and she was gonna evacuate to the evacuation center. Um, things changed really, really quickly that day. She managed to get on the highway to Edmonton. Um, May 4th, about three in the morning, we managed to uh, get back together. Start with that first 13, 15 hours of, of just trying to get the family back together. Then the next 48, you're thinking, well, we'll be back by the weekend. So you get some provisions, you know, toothbrush, toothpaste, that sort of thing. And then starting to realize that you're gonna be there for the long haul. So you get a little bit more, you do a little bit more. After that, um, when you start realizing you're in there for a month, maybe more, um, then it starts getting, I don't know, really hard on the soul because you're just so separated from what's normal. And then you get back home and you're sort of back into this sprint mode of, of talking to the adjusters, doing what you need to do to get your life back together. Uh, next thing you know, it's November, you're preparing for Christmas, you finish Christmas, and then there's this gap. Um, and then during that time, you know, there was, after we got back, um, my wife uh, came to me with this big, tearful smile and told me we were pregnant. And so that was just like beautiful, you know. That was a Hollywood ending to our story, I thought. And uh, turns out we had a miscarriage. Sometime in mid-October, uh, we just visited family in Edmonton and I came back to, to find out I'd lost my job and it wasn't uh, due to anything I had done. It's just that the, the fire had dried up the work that I was doing. Um, and so, you know, that was another kind of blow to the family. Nobody's competing for, for the right to hardship. Um, you know, I, I, I had some struggles um, because it seemed like one thing after the other uh, would just hit us and just when we were kind of getting, enough, getting myself on my feet again, it would hit me down again. So, you know, I had to, um, to you know, listen to the good advice of my wife and, uh, and go see my doctor and make sure that I, you know, had people to talk to and, uh, you know, work through a lot of the struggles that come from this. You don't plan for this in your life. They don't teach you how to deal with this. So that's been a learning curve. Um, and, you know, there's been some hard times in, in, in the past year, I'm not going to lie. And, uh, there's been some times where you're just uh, having a beer with a buddy in a garage and just kind of nod your head and go, yup, he's yup. You can lay it out and just be honest because everybody's gone through it and you know, there's no right way or wrong way to go through it. So I find that in many ways my relationships are stronger because you don't have to pretend to be strong. You can just say, you know, here's what it is today. I'm happy with every cement truck I see that drives by because I mean somebody's getting a foundation poured. I'm, I'm happy to see my friends post about their new floor plans of their houses and they're really excited. I'm happy for gardening season. I have a bunch of friends that are gardeners and you know kind of take the summer back from mother nature this time. Um, and you know I'm happy to see the kids come back. It's uh, on a little cul-de-sac here. The kids are out playing. Uh, they're doing well. Um, my neighbors are doing what neighbors do. Uh, the good news is we're, we're pregnant again. Pregnancy is going really well. We have another ultrasound on uh, Friday, um, and everything looks good. Heartbeat, the whole nine yards. Um, my daughter is just adapted as though nothing has ever happened. After the layoff, I'm kind of back to being a part-time stay-at-home dad. I'm definitely looking for work again. Um, the economy is starting to improve here, um, but you know I'm in a management role in, in sort of the not-for-profit sector, so I can't swing a hammer. That's a bit of a challenge, but. You know, it's something we'll overcome. I'm confident that by the fall, when we're due, I'll have a job again and we'll move forward.
This is our home. Our friends are here. Um, you know, my wife has been here uh, for about eight years, myself for over 20. Um, this is where we live, you know. It's a, it's a beautiful city. It's uh, got amazing people and uh, yeah, it's home. Thank you.